Okay, this is part two of the video for brushless DC motors. Um, in part one, we went through uh, an overview of brushed DC motors, uh, uh, and obviously started going through the theory of the of, the, of these brushless DC motors with hall sensors attached. Now we're going to go through this the sequence of going through the um, sensorless brushless DC motors, which actually the, the, the mechanical theory is is very very similar. However, there's a little bit more complications of, of actually knowing when to trans transition between each one of these phases. Um, so what we're going to do is we are going to um, go to brushless, sensorless brushless DC motors. So as you mentioned before. We've still got the, um, the three phases that we have. We've got phase A, B, and C. However, no Hall effects as the same. No Hall sensors. Uh, and we still need to do, however, we still need to do the, the phase commutation um, to make sure that the, the motor rotates in actually the, the, the direction that we need. So if we um, looked at going, again, we went from, I think it was from A to C from uh, B to C and then we go from B to A and then we go from C to A and then we go from uh, C to A and C to B and then we go from uh, A to B. So there's are six steps for clockwise rotation. So what we'd have to do is that the, you get what we do is to 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 find the transition uh, between each phase that you want to go. So obviously the first one was um, AC, and then we went from AC. So we went from BC, uh, and then we went from AB. Uh, did we do that? So we went from AC. B, C, B, C, A, B, yeah, that's right, no, B, A, B, A, uh, and then we went from C, A, and then we went to C, B, and then A, A, B. Okay, so if you look at these, obviously you'd, no you'd notice that you get the, um, the C's are together, your A's there are together, and your B's there are together, and then after you, that transitions back down from step six, all the way back to A again, it's up there, so you go from A to A, which are together, and then your B, B would be together, and your C and C would be together as well. Um, so essentially, what you're gonna have is your, your one phase is on for t two steps, two cycles, essentially. So what you get is you get the, if you get the, if we went from phases A to C, so if we went A, so we want uh, when A is <laughs> let's go, let's do steps. So in step one, we want AC, so we have all. Uh, we have phase A, B, C. So on uh, phase one, we want A high and C low. So we want A high. So A needs the voltage in, and C needs to have the voltage off. And then we've got the next step. So that'll be step one. So step two, we would have um, uh, B high and C low. So that must be coming, uh, leave that for now. So we've got B high, so B high, and C still low. And then three. B high and A low, so B is still high, uh, and A is going low, so A goes down low, so B high, A low, and then we've got 
C high A low, so on the fourth step, four, we've got C high A low, so we have C high and A going low, still low, and we on step five. C to B, so we want C high and B low, so B is now low. And then finally in phase 6, we have got A high and B low, so we have A high and we have B low. B low, which is that one. So it's, it's hard to see it at the moment. However, if we if we drew the back EMF lines through each one of these, so if we had from the phase A, we were transitioning from high to low. So you'd have your sequence there, connects to the bottom, and then back up to the top. And then B would be the same. We would transition there, between there and there, and obviously this one would be uh, between there and there. C would be from there to there, and obviously this one would be from there down to there. So what you get is obviously you can see that the trapezoidal current waveform, uh, which you get um, when doing these commutation sequences in each phase. And what you would like to do is obviously transition, um, tr transition between one phase and the next phase. Um, when you get your, your zero, it's, it's called the zero crossing which basically means that when the back EMF um, on each phase is, is crosses the zero point. Option now the zero crossing point is taken from the, um, the spare phase, the phase that is not being energized at any point on, on every step that has happened. So in this case on say step number two, obviously A is left open, uh, i.e. on step number two that A is not being used up here. Uh, so the phase is going, the, the, the current has been driven from B down to C because B is high and C is low. So A is the spare one. Um, that zero crossing is um, the voltage on the back EMF is put through a comparator op amp. Um, whereas the zero crossing event is essentially um, half of the phase voltage. So obviously, if you've got the phase voltage of 12 volts, you'd have a 6 volts um, going through um, one side of the comparator. As your reference, as your reference voltage, and you'd have the back EMF coming in on the second side of the comparator, and actually what that would do is that would give you, um, as soon as the the phase voltage drops off past a certain point, you know that you've got your, your zero crossing event, uh, which actually then initiates your your second step sequence on, on, on the six step cycle of your brushless DC motors, a senseless brushless DC motors. Sorry. Right, um, now continuing on, that, that's, that's all well and good, um, however this, this is only really good if, if obviously the motor is already moving, because obviously the motor needs to be rotating round in order for you to actually detect the back EMF, or needs to be rotating fast enough for the actual back, for there to be any back EMF to, to be able to detect. Um, if the motor is going too slow, obviously the back EMF is the electromagnetic force which is created um, or, or, or currents are induced um, from um, obviously essentially the motor acting as a generator. Um, so what you'd have to do is is obviously the slower the motor is going, the lower the smaller the back EMF voltage, and the faster it goes, the higher the back EMF voltage. But starting off, there is essentially because the, the motor is stationary, there is no back EMF voltages, so we have absolutely no idea uh, where the position of the rotor is. Um, with it in proportion to, to the to the magnets uh, of the rotor, so you have the north south, um, and then obviously you have your coils, and you have no idea you know where where the rotor is. So in order to overcome that, the starting sequence sorry, is a little bit more complicated. Um, what we'd have to do is um, if you go back to the phase diagram. A, B, C. Now, 
firstly you'd want to align the rotor into a known position. Um, now this can be done by, it well, is basically done by essentially just picking any two phases. Um, we're going to go for those, if we start with phase with A to C, because obviously that was the first step in the sequence, happy with. So we go A to C. So what we do is you say, put a, a voltage, <laughs> 12 volts between A and C. Um, now what you do is, this voltage would um, take this, this, this rotor and align it. So if we went from A to C, uh, we induce a current into these coils, which will um, create the magnetic field in order to rotate the rotor um, to align with the magnetic field, which actually puts the rotor into a known position. And so we, we put a current through the coils, put the rotor into a known position. Once the rotor is into a known position, we can then start um, stepping through the, the step sequences um, with an acceleration rate, or basically a, a set time. Uh, starting off for the long period of time um, and then off for the shorter period of time uh, between each step um, just to start the start off an acceleration so after we'd have the step AC first and then we go to uh, step BC so BC which would occur in say I don't know one millisecond following the first step and then what you'd have is you step have the next step uh, from from BC to obviously BA would then be, say, um, a slightly shorter time, uh, I'll say 0 0.09 uh, milliseconds, and obviously the next step would be slightly shorter, or, you, or you, obviously you can have the acceleration and the deceleration uh, again as, as a variable that can be de that can be changed. I mean, you, this is, the higher your inertia, if, you, if you've got a rotor with a high inertia on it, you'd actually want a much longer acceleration time. So, um, and obviously motors with, with a much lower inertia can be accelerated much faster with, without actually s skipping. Because if you if you accelerate too fast, what happens is your phases energize from one step to the other too too quickly, and your rotor doesn't keep up. If your rotor doesn't keep up, you you lose synchronous uh, synchronicity with, with with the rotor itself, and your motor will stall. Um, now, what you th things you've got to be be aware of is when when you are doing this sort of sequencing, um, the first thing you need to do is let's go on to a new page. A, B, C. The first thing when you when you put your current through um, from A to C, um, you want to obviously. Um, first parameter is how much voltage you want to put in there, how much current you want to put in there. Um, if your current is too high, if you just put the set 12 volts across from A to B, uh, what essentially you're doing is because the, 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 the resistance of the coils are fairly low, so you actually have a very high current going through those coils, which obviously if you're not careful you could burn them out. So what you do is we actually limit the, the voltage going through this coil, so you PWM the voltage going between A and C, to a percentage value. So say we, we're only putting, say, if we put 10% through of 12 volts, so we've got 1.2 volts, and you're going between the motors, which obviously that induces the current going through those uh, those those windings, which will then be a, a current which is high enough to create a large enough magnetic field to orientate the, the rotor into position. Um, so obviously the first parameter we've got is obviously a... Um, A, 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 a parameter which sets how much torque to align the rotor. So we've got alignment torque. Um, the second parameter you want to do is how long do you want to keep it on there for? Again, it's to, a lot to do with the, 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 the inertia of the, of the rotor and the inertia of the load. Um, so obviously you can... We, we, this, this alignment time... Should be determined. It's basically the length of time um, you, you keep this 10% or this voltage going through the coils for. 
So this can be anywhere between, let's say, if you've got a moose with a large inertia, uh, as, as long as a second, uh, down to uh, a few milliseconds, maybe 30, 40 milliseconds, for um, a much, much lower inertia motor. So first we'll we align the rotor. Um, first what we do is put the voltage through, a, a percentage of the voltage, mm. the voltage of PWM down to uh, an acceptable level. Uh, and then we align it for a certain amount of time. And once we aligned it for a certain amount of time, we want to then start accelerating out. So actually we go from A to C, and the next step from B to C, we want to um, uh, set how long we, we, we so we give it alignment time. After alignment time, we, we initiate the next phase. And we stay in this phase for a certain period of time. Um, and then we, we've got the, that's when we start the acceleration sequence. And so after the acceleration sequence, so we get the acceleration variable. Um, and then once we start accelerating up, after these, it's just a, this, uh, it's, it's initial acceleration, it's just based on time, because obviously we're not going fast enough to detect any back EMF. So the next thing we want to try and do is uh, step number four. We'd want to try and um, once the time uh, has reached a certain thing, so we, once the the motor reaches a certain speed, a known speed, that we know we can read the back EMF reliably um, to detect the zero crossing, we can then do it. So obviously it's going to be a, um, a transition speed. It's a, it's a transition speed. Where we go from um, fr from essentially the open loop to closed loop, so we will start reading the back EMF on the motor. And the other thing we need to have a look at is um, we've got the alignment time and an acceleration variable. But actually, when we do the step, the second step from B to C, we also want to. Um, Allow for um, option the first step for uh, we, 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 we put a voltage through the coils to align it, but obviously because we're still um, holding this for actually less than a second, but obviously maybe a few hundred milliseconds, and um, there's still going to be quite high current. So obviously this 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 current still needs to be um, controlled. So we also have a, a, another variable there. Which we need to say is the acceleration torque, obviously, that will, or the acceleration current, the amount of currents we allow to go through the coils during the acceleration. Okay, so so what happens is obviously once we've got the transition speed of the motor we go from open to close we transition to the um the back emf the zero crossing variable i should we then go back into this thing and we then carry on and we have the motor up and running um thank you very much